Dr. Bean, you're one of the many people who left Sinn Féin at national and local government level over the last few years. You're a long-standing member of the party. Are you taking pleasure now out of this decline, given that you have, to a certain extent, benefited from it? I take no pleasure in it at all because there's actually many decent people that I know well who are councillors across the country, hardworking people who've lost their seats as a result of the crash in the Sinn Féin vote over the last while. Uh, I saw it coming to a certain extent because I, could, I was talking to people around the country, core Sinn Féin voters for years. Oh, hold on now, you spent all your time in the run-up to elections saying it was Fianna Fáil were going to lose support. You never said that Sinn oh, Féin I, was going to... I, you kept hammering at Fianna Fáil, I, not I Sinn Féin. Told, I, I very clearly said that our support was coming from both of those parties. And I'll tell you, listen, there has been massive policy drift within Sinn Féin over the last number of years. I believe Sinn Féin has been looking strategically at a lot of the leafy liberal votes that the Labour Party got out of the seats that they were getting in South Dublin, etc. They sought to build a, a, let's say, a bridge to the Irish Times voters uh, across the country. Um, you know, Mary Lou Macdonald has probably changed the direction within in, in the, the party on a number of issues. And I think a lot of their core vote uh, actually felt what's the point anymore in this? So, you know, there were flying kites around the poppy, there were flying kites around uh, the Commonwealth, uh, there were flying kites. Even Mary Lou, for example, went uh, to London on two occasions and asked for Westminster to legislate uh, on the north of Ireland. For 200 years, Republicans have been going to London telling them to stop legislating for Ireland. And here we had... You're saying she wasn't green enough? Well, I I'm saying that her, her core Republican support are the people who didn't go out and do the work on the ground. And that was... But that was they saw her marching behind a banner in New York that said, get England out of Ireland and in fact there are many people who say that she scared the soft vote by doing that. Well, And she and, did and, her chucky her law routine. See, I, 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 think, I think to a certain extent what they sought to do <clears throat> was to build into that soft vote. It didn't happen but yet they lost a lot of their traditional voters uh, over the last number of years. The other point that's really important here is there's a phenomenal rigidity within Sinn Féin. It's a, it's a hangover from the past and you see by if, if you're losing 40 elected reps when you're in opposition there's absolutely something seriously wrong in the space of a couple of years. Uh, these, uh, in opposition, it's the time you build with elected reps, and yet, because of that rigidity, because of that lack of space for people to have a little bit of a different view than, than the leadership, it was well, absolutely you, Well, just on that, because your insight is interesting, uh, uh, a Fianna Fáil person was on this programme, and he said to me off air, I said, what do you put down the, the, Fianna, the Sinn Féin thing? And he said, well, you know, Sinn Féin are toxic. They're not a normal party. Is that true? When you speak about the rigidity, is there a group of people in West Belfast that actually called the shots, or is that unfair? I'll I don't think there is a group in West Belfast that called the shots. And that's a, I'm being seriously honest with that. But I do think there's a group of about 10 people, the National Officer Board of the party, who decide exactly what happens. And there is the internal infrastructure of, of internal democracy for sure, but everything comes down on, from on high and is pushed Martin, down. Martin, is that true?